How's it going, everybody? Happy 4th of July. Yankees had a tough one yesterday. They were shut down 2-0 by the Cleveland Guardians. Some more tough at-bats in that game from Joey Gallo and Aaron Hicks. And that has continued to spark the controversy and the discussions online about whether or not Miguel Andujar should be the Yankees' everyday left fielder, at least until the trade deadline when you have a chance to pick up, you know, a more established big league hitter. Now, Miguel Andujar earned a lot of fans in 2018. He had a monster year. He played 149 games. He hit 297, 27 home runs, 855 OPS, 47 doubles. But in 2019, he was diving back into third base, and he tore his labrum. It required surgery, and he really hasn't been the same hitter since. In the three seasons in which he's appeared at the big league level since then, 2020, 2021, and 2022 combined, he's played in 80 games, so roughly half of a season. He's hitting 249 with seven home runs and 21 ribbies. He's got a 638 OPS, so the OPS has fallen over 200 points. 77 OPS plus. That's less than what you would typically get from Joey Gallo or from uh, Aaron Hicks. So I understand everyone who's saying, well, the numbers don't align with giving Miguel Andujar a shot. Now in AAA this year, Andujar is doing really well. He's got an OPS right around 850. He's hitting well over 300. And he's shown that he can play defense. He's improved defensively according to the eye test. I think he can run a little bit. I think he's got a decent arm. And so I understand the people that want to give Andujar a shot in left field. And I fall into that category. And the main reason why is that we've seen what Joey Gallo can do or can't do, to be more precise. We've seen over 100 games as a Yankee that he just doesn't fit in. And I think it's a foregone conclusion that he'll be traded somewhere by the trade deadline, even though the Yankees are probably going to take a bath because they gave up a lot of prospects to get Joey Gallo, and his value has only sunk to historically low levels. He's been historically bad this season. Hicks also not great this year. He's had a couple of big hits. I think he's done better than Gallo, even though his power has been less. Uh, He at least has had some clutch moments. I can't think of a single clutch moment that Joey Gallo has had and I wouldn't trust him in a big spot now if you dive into the metrics on Miguel Andujar they tell you that he's just not as good but I think he's one of those cases where the metrics are a little bit deceptive this is a guy who wants it who's trying to fight his way back into the major leagues and trying to get back to a level in which he looked like he was a young superstar on the rise I mean, this is a guy who finished in second place in the Rookie of the Year voting in 2018. That doesn't happen by accident. Now, maybe you'll say, okay, well, he was great at one point, but since the shoulder injury, he hasn't been the same guy. But I don't think we can say that for sure because he hasn't really had an extended chance since that injury. And I think that if you give him maybe 20 games in the outfield, I think you're going to see those OPS numbers rise. Also, he's not very aggressive. I get it. He doesn't walk a lot. I think there's way too much value put on the importance of walks. I do think walks are important, but somebody like Joey Gallo, who only hits home runs or walks or strikes out uh, and strikes out 40% of the time. The problem with Joey Gallo trying to work walks is that if the pitcher is pounding the strike zone, which elite pitchers can do, especially in the postseason. He's going to strike out. He's not going to draw those walks. So I don't like having Joey Gallo up in those big at-bats. We saw yesterday Aaron Hicks up in another big at-bat. I think at least Aaron Hicks will put the ball in play a little bit more often, and he's a switch hitter, and he's a little bit dangerous from both sides of the plate at least. I mean, it might be in there somewhere. I think you have to stay committed to Aaron Hicks because of the contract. I don't think anybody's going to take the contract. So to me, the guy that's up for replacement, at least for the next few weeks, is Joey Gallo. I just don't think you can keep running him out there. And I like somebody who's a little bit aggressive. A lot of times when a reliever will come into the ball game late in the game, 
they're trying to establish the fastball right out of the gate. They're trying to throw strikes to show that they can throw strikes, to show the umpire that they're throwing strikes so that they'll get the benefit of the doubt on some calls. And that's where it helps to have somebody who's a little bit aggressive in the box because he's swinging before he gets to two strikes, before he gets to that wipeout pitch. He's up there and he's saying, see ball, hit ball. And that's the mentality that I like from Andujar. Now, I get it. The numbers just haven't been there. He had an opportunity this weekend, and he went one for eight, I think, in the doubleheader. So it's a little bit on Miggy that he hasn't produced during his opportunities. But again, the Yankees are putting this kid in a really tough spot. They're saying you've got a very short window to produce. And even if you do produce, you're probably going back down to AAA. That's the message that they're sending him. And it's hard to produce and play well in that scenario. I think if you let him play for three weeks, you know, he's requested a trade. Here's what you do. You say, look, give us until July 31st. Go out there and play every day. You're going to play every day and give somebody a day off. So that way we can rest these guys during the heat of the summer. We want you to play your game. Don't care if you go 0 for 3, 0 for 4, you're going to be in there the next day. And you're not going down to the minors. Relax. Just have fun. Play the game you've been playing your whole life. I think he would succeed. I think that's the approach you have to take with Miguel Andujar. And if he did that, he would also raise his trade value. And should the Yankees decide, okay, well, we want to stick with a left-handed hitter, at least now you have a chip in Andujar that you could move somewhere. So, um, you know, I'm coming down on the side of this debate that I, w- I would rather give Miguel Andujar the opportunity because we don't know yet exactly who he is. The stats suggest that he's a little bit overrated by fans. I get it. But my eyes tell me a different story, and my baseball experience tells me a different story, that you need these type of aggressive players, these type of high-energy players. And Joey Gallo, to me, just looks like a man who's lost at sea. I don't see him finding his way back. You got a big 13-and-a-half game lead in the standings. What have you got to lose by giving one of your own a shot to you know, win the fans back over to win the organization back over and to pick up some big hits and at least raise his value. That's just the way I see it. Uh, Now I get it. His exit velocity isn't what it was. The power isn't what it was, but call me sentimental. I like the guy and I think he would add value and there's a certain intangible quality to his at bats there. They just seem more competitive than the ones that uh, Joey Gallo has. So I'm coming down on the side of this argument of give Andujar a chance.